Um, let me see. Where is Yoshi quoting? Okay. January. So, let's see. This is the full suite of CSG products. And here is everything that I use it for. First, I use it for running Medicare supplement quotes. Very simple. Very simple, right? Mm -hmm. We're just running the basic stuff. Pick an age, pick a gender, pick a plan, tobacco or non-tobacco, household discount or not. And so we're looking at a certain effective date. And that's just to make sure that that rate is still the same because sometimes they do change. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Pull up the quote. And you can instantly, you know, begin to, you know, you can you can click X here to remove companies you don't want to. So say I'm not looking at that one. So I'm not looking at that one. If it came down to this quote, Ascendo or Aetna, which one do you open? Well, it depends on the discount. So if they get, um, if they if they have somebody living with them that qual and that qualifies for the Ascendo discount, it's a little bit better rate. Okay. If not, then Continental Life is going to be the best rate. And that's pretty much running the MedSup quote. Um, you can you can also use market analytics here to look at what the age built-in age increase is, and you can try to look at um, you can look at where is it at um, increase history. The problem with a lot of that is is most of these are new charters, so it's not really showing anything. But if you went down to say one that had been in the market for a while, like Shenandoah. So they had a 5% increase the next year, it says negative 10%, so they went down to stay competitive. So, um, so you can see some of that in there to use. You can also see how much premium they have on the books. So like Continental Life's at 505 million last time they updated this. 250,000 nationally covered under Continental Life. What's a safe number that you look at? You know, say 100,000 in there, right? 100,000 in lives? That, there's very few that are even gonna be that high. So I look at the state and I just kind of compare it to the other companies, you know. Um, but that's not a huge portion of what we look at. That one only has 10 in the state. Well, you also have to think, so the, what they do is they only up, they update this information periodically. And so this isn't fresh. So this is Manhattan Life Assurance Company of America, which has only been doing med steps for a very short period of time. Most of those are Western United. Yes. So this is going to show... It's not showing Western United, so it's going to show 10 in the state for that. But this is a brand new charter. It was only effective August 17th. So it's kind of impressive that they even have any numbers on here because most of the time it'll just say this for a little while. Um, so, like, okay, Southern Guarantee. So you can look at, you know, a lot of these. Capital Life's not showing up yet. Here's one Mutual Omaha, 568 million. And that's going to be with that specific charter, United World. And that's the and so even here they're doing pretty well actually, loss ratio is sixty six point two nine percent which is good. They have to keep it at like eighty. It can't be below eighty, right? Is that accurate? Uh, eighty means something. So um, I'd have to circle back to you on that. I know there's something related to it, but it's not something that I've ever had to focus on. Then they have to like lower their rates or something. Right. So if you look at. Um, like Continental Life's loss ratio is 58.39%, which is really good too. Um, but they're at 1.3 million in the state. And a lot of that's because Ascendo has taken a good bit of the market share as well for them. But if I go down to Mutual of Omaha, they have put it all through this one charter for the past year. So they've gotten a, a really good block of business, honestly, in the state with a, with a good loss ratio. So, so either one of those companies would be really, really good. Um, so those are things you can look at on here. I wouldn't select plans. You want to exclude them, you know, because we're not typically quoted, quoting select plans. If you click annual rate, it'll show you annual premiums. So select plans are like a PPO. It's it's like a med sup with a network. What the fuck? So, well, it'll it'll basically if you have a plan F, it'll pay a hundred percent if you stay in the network. But um, they're not very. They're in some areas they may be good, but here they're not very good. So. Um, under underwriting filters, you can um, you can what you can do is add like these underwriting filters here, so I can say heart artery blockage, and then it'll tell me what the look back period is for each company. So if I do uh, heart rhythm disorders or pacemaker, it's going to say ever on here one year, and see this is something that's odd because. 
Ascendo right, yeah. is the same underwriting as Continental Life. So that's why I tell people this stuff is not foolproof. Because why would this say one year and this say ever when it's the I'm same underwriting? Like that the one with the light bulb. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's that, so that's just somebody that we know that created it, and that's more of just a search tool based on collaborating all the underwriting information. That's not really available to anybody else. This um, like diabetes dependent on insulin is going to be. Um, so currently, they're currently using insulin, but you can get down and you can find some other companies that might say more than 50 units daily. So if they're under 50 units, they'll, um, they'll potentially accept it depending on some other things. But you can go and add multiple of those filters. So I can add, you know, all these filters and it'll tell me all of them on here. So anyway, so that's on the MedSup side. The other thing that we use it for is, you know, quick Medicare Advantage search sometimes or to print off like the, the numbers for somebody of all the ones that are available. You can do Medicare Advantage or Part D and um, if you do, so let's just say no subsidy level and I'm just doing the Medicare Advantage plans available here and of course it's only going to show like one here. Let's see what it is. So okay, so well, and this is oh, sometimes it'll du duplicate because it's using more than one county. So if you update it to just show one county, then it'll just show and the individual plans. So it's showing lasso and three human options right now. Of course, there'll be more later on. Um, but cool thing about this is on the MedSup side or the Medicare Advantage side, I can also go to uh, PDF and I can export it. And it'll have my, it'll have, you can, if you're on your own branded one, it'll have your branding or your profile information. So mine's got my website, my name, my phone number, my email, and a picture of me. And you can put whatever picture you want to there. So that's kind of cool because when they pick a plan, you know, if you were just mailing that to somebody or emailing it or whatever, that's useful. Um, another thing is if I pull up the Humana, let's see. If I pull up this, I say view plan details. <clears throat> they have a button called fill the gaps. So if you pull up a Medicare Advantage plan, you can click fill the gaps. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting in that same information, and I can pick a hospital and dentistry plan. So we like to use the Heartland one. So let's say let's just say I'm using a five day. So this plan has a seven day hospital. Period. So I do a Heartland National Life seven day benefit. Okay. Add to comparison. You know, it'll pull it up on here, and you can customize it and quote it with the hot Heartland. The uh, so obviously this is a really bad deal because it's Humana's eighty two bucks. But Heartland National, you know, you can just pull up the base benefit at ten twenty, but you can go and and add some stuff. So you can add the three hundred dollar. Per surgical procedure rider. Um, so you, seven days. I mean, that ten bucks seems a little low. I mean, well, what it is is it's, it hasn't allowed me to change it to the uh, proper daily amount. So you're going to go down. So it's doing it a hundred, but I'm going to want to do it at three hundred a day. Yeah. So that's going to make it go up to fifty bucks a month. So that's the outpatient surgery, the hospital and uh, indemnity benefit. You can do this lump sum confinement. I don't do that on there. I do the. Um, you could do this one, which adds 1380. And then the other one, where is the cancer rider? Hopefully, mm -mm 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 -mm. it lets me add it. Do the ambulance benefit. Where is the cancer rider? Surely they have it on here. Huh. Well, that's kind of a flaw because I like to add the cancer writer, so sure. you may have to do it in the Heartland agent uh, portal. And I'm going to actually ask the Heartland guys about that and why they can't get that in there. Because that's a big one. That's the number one writer I want to add, actually. So, um, but anyway, you can quote your hospital indemnity plans within here. So and you could quote Aetna, too. So, so what do you do after that? Do you, like, hit PDF or, like, what's the... So it just first of all, it just gives you the total package, but yeah, you can click uh, right here and go export it with the total quote. So if we were looking at a zero premium PPO with this, this right. you know that wouldn't wouldn't it's look reasonable. so bad. Yeah. Um, but if I if I export this right here, so now I've got the eighty two, 
Let's see, why is that one. showing zero? It's not. There's something I didn't hit. Let's see. Not including it as zero. What did I do? Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Maybe show. Oh, there it is. Show. You got to hit click show additional benefits, and the cancer rider comes up. So then I can add a seven thousand dollar cancer rider too. So and I might. So if I'm taking money off of it. I'm probably looking at like reducing this because the copay is really 250, and then maybe this skilled nursing facility copay. Where is that? You know, you could remove that technically, and that brings another thirteen dollars off. In, in so, your experience, I mean, I guess you're selling self accepted. I mean, do any people really go twenty days over in the skilled nursing care? Not very often. And what's no, that? most of the time, if they start having a robust copay there, they'll kick them back to the hospital. Um, if they have to stay, What's so it's um, very uncommon, but it has happened. Like typically, what do you, why? Well, it's funny because if they have a med sup, we see them staying in there longer. So it's like the people that are doing the billing know, um, but but if they if they if they need it longer and they're gonna, it's funny they'll just all of a sudden readmit them to the hospital. It's like they know how to utilize their care to the best of the insurance's ability, which probably sounds like insurance fraud, but we're not doing that. That's what doctors and hospitals and hospital administrators do. But that makes me more comfortable selling Advantage. Yeah. Yeah, they, oh, they, they definitely cater to what it is. Now, there are some places that, especially in skilled nursing care, that'll be like, we hate these Advantage plans. You should get back on Medicare. Of course, they don't know all the variables of someone's care. You know, they just know what it's looking like to do it for them. For some reason, when this exports, it's exporting from zero, which I'm not understanding why. So I'm gonna have to look into that one. Um, if I go to print, does it do it then? I mean, the, the Heartland app itself is pretty dang easy too. Yeah, but that um, that is a big. So let me see if that. So if you print it and save it as a PDF, it actually populates it with the numbers. So that there's some kind of flaw in there. It may be from it may be a Safari flaw. I'm not sure, but that 6840 uh, is not is 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 print. If you click print, it will come out of there. Um, and you can always save it as a PDF if you're emailing it. But that that's what it shows. So it shows the 6840. But anyway, okay. Another thing we use it for, um, we do use it for final expense. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a great final expense quote engine when you're not looking for medical underwriting. There are some, there is one out there that a lot of final expense agents use. We we get by without it, um, but there's they have one that have like underwriting filters and things for final expense. We just kind of do it for price points to see what the, where the best price is. If you look at this here, bada bada bing, bada bada boom, bada bada boom. Okay, so senior life, of course, we're not writing senior life as right now, but uh, if you look at getting down to um, some of these other ones, Pekin is probably one of the better price ones. Of course, it's, those are extremely, um, extremely strenuous underwriting for the final expense world. Lower compensation, but the best rates out there. Standard, still somewhat low compensation, uh, but a little bit more lenient on underwriting. Um, then you get into, you know, these are, you know, ones that we're liking to write right now because they pay levelized compensation. So you're getting, it's not upfront cash, so you're not getting rich quick, but it, if they keep it for a long period of time, you actually make way more money off of it. Um, so it's just level comp schedule. Um, United of Omaha, um, you know, that's probably one of our premier ones we go to for final expense, but okay. then... We're also looking at uh, Ascendo's product as well. So. Ascendo Bankers and United. Yeah, Ascendo Bankers United are bankers. Probably the most one of the more lenient ones on underwriting, uh, in that category that we're writing. We write peak in two, but only for like rate buster. We have to write them somebody super super healthy. Um, and so if you look at. Uh, that so yeah I mean that that's really all there is on that I mean you get down here and these are just ridiculously high or overpriced quotes I mean sometimes they'll show you like a standard benefit quote like a sendo this is showing like a some sort of graded benefit option for people in less good health uh -huh. those are options 
Um, but yeah, this is it's pretty pretty helpful um, quote engine there for final expense. Okay. Okay. The other thing we use it for, so you can just go straight into a hospital indemnity quoter here. I don't really use it this way. Um, but that's that's like if you were just if you weren't filling the gaps in a Medicare Advantage plan, but you were just wanting to quote a hospital indemnity plan. So you can you can go on here and view plan details just like we just did, but outside of a Medicare Advantage plan. I don't know why you would do that because it'd be better to pull up the Medicare Advantage plan side by side with it in one quote. So, so okay, but when would that ever fit? Who who wants that? Who wants this who wants without an Advantage plan? Um, maybe if you're writing Obamacare and they need a simplified issue hospital indemnity plan, they have a high deductible. You write like a Heartland National with a lump sum, you know, twenty-five hundred dollar hospitalization benefit, a daily hospital copay benefit, and then a cancer rider, and then it helps them cover their, and it's simplified issue. Whereas some of the under sixty-five plans that pair with those are a little more strenuous on their underwriting. Mm -hmm. But something like Heartland National, Banker's Life, or Banker's Fidelity Life, or uh, um, even even Aetna would probably be a little bit more lenient on that. So you can write the Continental Life. So like if you're writing an Aetna PPO plan, mm -hmm. you may want to write the Aetna um, uh, Hospital Indemnity Plan, which comes up on here as Continental Life. And the only reason that I would say it over Heartland National is the name brand. Right. And it, it, it is Aetna, it's the same. So they're not as confused when they get an Aetna card. Mm -hmm. But Heartland National one is more customizable. Compensation is a little better. Yeah, um, so, um, and they have a guaranteed issue window from 64 and a half to 65 and a half. So they don't have to answer any health questions to get it in that period. Now there is a pre-existing condition clause in there, but I believe it's only a six month uh, pre-ex clause for people that get it during that guaranteed issue period. Last thing that we currently use it for is if I go back here to dashboard, we use um, the e-scope. Yeah, that's the big one. So on the e-scope, you can pull it up here, and this is just some places where we've shown some, um, we did some incomplete ones here, but like if I just go and start one, real simple, Harry Smith, save and continue. And this is for all carriers, just one nice generic e-scope. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's sick. So you can go, I agree, continue. Um, are you in the same physical location? So yes. Or no. Does it yeah. matter? If you do no, then it's only going to let you do the email signature. Oh, okay, cool. But if you do yes, then you can actually uh, type in mother's maiden name. So this is, say we're doing a drug plan, whatever, um, applicant or representative's name, Mary Smith, self, say mother's maiden name is Jones, last four, one, two, three, four. Tupelo, Mississippi, 38801, apply e-signature. That's wherever they're at? Yeah, yeah that's um, showing that you're acknowledging you're signing it. This is for people that are signing it. Um, yeah, it's where they're at. So if you're doing it over the phone, you you put um, their city on there, but then you send an email signature. Dude, you know what would be absolutely tremendous if we could take that same simplicity and not only do it via email, but also text? Well... The ascend one is the text one. Yeah. But it would be nice if they could make this one text as well. For United. And then, because, you know, those Well, are the technically, two. you can use the ascend scope mm -hmm. and apply it to United. Really? Because the, what, because they could, so think about it this way. Mm -hmm. The scope of appointment can't be required to be carrier specific okay. because you're a broker and you represent the product that's best for the client but you have to get a scope signed before a meeting, so you don't know what's best for the client. So you have to be able to get any scope signed and then utilize it. Now, of course, like sometimes if you're writing a Humana app and you get that barcoded Humana scope, they're gonna keep up with it in that case for you because it's barcoded, mm -hmm. otherwise they're not. So if you, get, if you use a generic scope or a scope that's not branded for that carrier, uh -huh. it's up to you to keep track of those scopes. Now the cool thing on here is this one keeps track of it for you because they have a document locker. Yeah, they don't care which one to go with. Yeah, so if I do, um, yeah, legally they can't require you to use a 
it just has to and be an authorized sense. scope. It makes sense. You shouldn't know, you know, yeah. going in. So we'll say, um, so let's put all that mess in there and then hit continue. And as you can see, apply my e signature as the agent, sign, and then it'll be. Um, you can save it so you can print it off here if you want to you can download it to your desktop and then you can save them like on a different file spot which I kind of recommend maybe putting it in your CRM but you can also save to library and then you can come in here and have like a little library locker of scopes and then you can pull them back up if you ever need them so it's kind of nice the uniformity of it but if you did need a tech scope I would use the ascend Text scope right now. It's just so easy. Yeah. Now, you there are some that you can do like um, e applications through here. Um, I it's only for certain companies. So if you do um, if you if you're running like a Medicare supplement quote for instance, um, and you let's say get quote. Trying to see something real quick. If you do this, you'll have um, like an apply now button on the ones that have an e app available. See, Nassau doesn't, this one doesn't, but if you get down to uh, this in the bottom right corner of the quote, if that has that, that means there's an e app. So if I click apply now on that one, it'll take you to a CSG quote, um, e app. So it says you must be appointed, so you have to update it if you're using it. So I don't really use this for the e-app but it's not necessarily a bad idea. The reason I like using Aetna's e-app is because I can cross sell in it. Now from what I've heard they're actually going to be getting it where they can you can cross sell within here as well on that app but um, in, in, right, in this case let's just say They worked to the 68, now they have GI. How long is that window? 63 days from the date that they lose their coverage or the date that the GI period starts. Now, if they're GI, but they qualify for underwriting, try to use an underwritten med stuff, you know. Um, so, yeah, so this is just the, you know, then there's no... Um, you know, you can just go through this quote engine. There's no cross selling on here, so that's why I'm still using the Aetna E app. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I mean that's that's what we use CSG for. That's that's CSG in a nutshell. And you can have uh, like Heartland National has their own branded um, E app that CSG built it for them. So you, if you're writing Heartland National Med stuff like in a state where that's competitive, like Ohio or North Carolina, they have that. Um, then we, so we have our own branded CSG. Um, we just, you know, because we do some contracting through Heartland Financial Group, they do a bigger, more robust platform. So we have the MedSAP, MA, Final Expense, and Dental. Um, I don't even know if they had the dental one, but... Um, see, and anytime I switch to Bobby Rock Insurance, it removes my Heartland Financial Group one, so then I have to go back through HFG apps. Uh, and then... Oh, and you can see some of these other things out here. It probably won't give me access to it, but these are other things that CSG can you can pay for, um, like Market Pulse. Um, so you know we have to you have to add some of those Market Edge. Why don't you trade in your car? And uh... <laughs> I, I have. Uh, have you ever seen what they do? They're like. Um, these extra things here, yeah, I've, I've kind of seen it. it. Tells you like where, like the hot spots, like how much right. percentage of stops, and yeah, MA. I haven't really decided how to use it because most of that stuff I kind of like. All it really does is reaffirm what you already know that high metro areas have super high Medicare Advantage penetration rates, and uh, other places have high med sub penetration rates. So. You know, and it, so it does. It's I, I've been in it where it had that before, and I'm. I just it was like cool, yeah. 
Yeah. But I, I don't know. If it, it's just a bunch of, it's like you're inundating yourself with information you can't use to make more money. I, I know one strategy I was thinking of, I never implemented it because I, I, sometimes I think too much and don't do enough, but it was when Ascendo was coming out in all the new states a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And if this the new product's coming out the cheapest, and you just you know hit up the, the rural areas, you know they have a, a sub, you know, 80% chance and say, hey, you know, here's your here's a quote with Ascendo. Yeah. Yeah, you could definitely do that. and But we kind of know where those areas are already, too. Right, so right, it's right. like paying for that. It's just like it's like reaffirming it for you. Okay. But, I, you know, I think sometimes we spend too much time trying to reaffirm something and not enough time just taking the massive amount of information we already have in our head and applying it to help, 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 help more people. Yeah. Um, All right. Um, I think that is all my... Uh, for the moment, I mean, yeah, uh, better training, I'm sure, than not getting a webinar. Well, it's more streamlined to exactly what you need to utilize as right. well. So, um, but yeah, I want to.